Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. And, uh, and thank you all for being here. It's been uh, my misfortune, starting off, my misfortune to not be here for uh, the rest of the day today. And uh, that is, um, that's quite a disappointment to me because I've had the pleasure of being here yesterday and, I, um, and, uh, and also uh, for one evening earlier on in the week. And, uh, and I got to see what a, what a fantastic um, gathering this is and what a fantastic opportunity it is to share ideas. So um, uh, I would have liked to have been here because education is one of the areas that we're um, uh, particularly interested in, environment being the other. And, and today, unfortunately, a bit of a clash arose where, um, uh, where we partnered with, a, with a, uh, a big company and big companies run to their own timetable in one of our projects. So, Fonterra and the dairy industry announced today that they're putting $5 million into one of our projects, ZIP, which I know a number of uh, you people here today were, um, were uh, yeah, thanks, were um, uh, involved or uh, have heard about from, uh, from Lou and... Uh, Lou and Al over the last few days, and so that's fa that's fantastic step forward uh, for Zip, and um, and given that it's really the the first month of Zip's existence, it's a great start for the business, so or for the for the opportunity. But I'm going to talk about uh, education and um, and our interest in education. Uh, first of all, I know uh, for some of you I, I, uh, who were here yesterday. Uh, I, I talked a little bit about Next Foundation, but for those of you who weren't, who weren't, I'll run quickly. Just through who we are, um, and uh, and uh, because we've uh, been around for less than a year, Next, Fa Next Foundation was was launched in March March last year with a with a fantastic gift from a couple of of a hundred million dollars to the country from a from a couple of uh, fantastic New Zealanders called Neil and Annette Plowman. Uh, very low profile New Zealanders, uh, they, they, their wealth came from a company called New Zealand Towel Services that I think many of you will have had some experience with if you've uh, used the white towels with the blue stripes on the side and in, in, in public places uh, at any time over the last uh, 90 years or so. And, um, and uh, um, Neil and Annette uh, had been involved in a number of philanthropic projects already over the last decade really, most notably for those of you from up uh, Auckland Way, Rotorua, the restoration of Rotorua Island um, and, uh, and now the restoration of Abel Tasman National Park and, um, and, uh, and uh, they have really decided to formalise the way they went about their philanthropy in, in forming Next Foundation last year, really with an objective of creating a legacy of an environmental and, excellent, environmental and educational excellence for the benefit of future generations of New Zealanders. So it's $100 million to give away over the next uh, five to ten years um, uh, and, um, and to give it away to a small number of large-scale projects in a way that can make a difference in the areas that, uh, that, that, that those, those projects are, are operating in. So, um, and really those projects that we're looking, f looking for have got three, three characteristics really at a high level. They, we want them to be able to be transformational in the area that, that, they're, that, they're, that they're operating in. We want them to be inspirational so that people who are, who, are, who are in that space really look at them and say these are projects that we think should continue and, should, and, and we want to support in whatever way we can. And part of, part of getting to that place in our view is that they need to be run in a business business-like way, even though they're not commercial projects. We're supporting charitable organisations, not, not uh, for-profit organisations. And we're not looking for uh, financial returns. We're looking for in this educational returns, and, uh, and in the case of the environmental projects, we're looking for ecological returns. Just, you know, how do, how do we, we operate, you know, I guess I, I've come from um, outside the philanthropic industry. Uh, you know, my, my, the last uh, 20 years for me have been involved in private company investment, uh, really. And, and um, one, of the, one of the sort of observations that, I, that uh, is, or one of the things that's become clear to me is that our way of uh, philanthropy um, is a little different from, from many players, not all uh, in the space in New Zealand, but, but not, from, uh, not, a, not in the US. I mean, our model, 
for next is really the US philanthropic foundation model. Uh, and, um, and really we are doing that in New Zealand in a way which will work in New Zealand, uh, uh, we believe. And, um, and we are all New Zealanders, although our chairman is based in the States. He lives in New York and has been there for about 15 years, Chris Liddell. And, uh, you know, Chris's exposure to the US philanthropic scene has been a, been a big factor in, in uh, in shaping next and, and the way we go about things. But we think about the projects that we're joining with as having, you know, we bring funding to them obviously, and uh, you know, if they don't need funding then uh, we're not there, but, but we also bring partnerships and, and, and that's really about networks and introductions and so on. And you know, the, the, um, that's, um, you know that's something, uh, you know, I think it's probably fair to say that you know, if I take today's example with Zip, I think relationships with Fonterra were that that really were held by Next were really a, a significant factor in actually getting that discussion uh, uh, started and and getting it credible. And so you know it's a it's a good example of how those networks can help the projects that we invest with. And if we do things in a, in the way that we believe that we can and we, we believe that we should, then we'll build credibility for those projects. I don't think that we've necessarily got it yet because we haven't really done much yet. But as if we continue to do things and, and build a, a credible way of evaluating, of investing and of partnering with our projects, then we'll hopefully build some credibility which will bring credibility to those projects that we invest with. And I think in an educational, uh, you know, particularly in the educational sphere, one of the things we can give uh, give projects is um, is some surety of of, of long or longevity of support. Um, you know, the electoral term is a major factor, I think, in in uh, in, in, in edu educational initiatives, and uh, there's not a shortage, in our view, of of good educational initiatives in New Zealand, and probably the opposite, but. Um, but getting past the three-year mark, or the or or that mark, or the or the next three-year mark when it comes is often a hurdle, and um, or a cre or or an abyss or whatever. You, and and um, uh, you know if we're looking to support projects for terms of five years or more, so that I think with the with the those initiatives that we support, we can hopefully make a difference uh, to them through doing that. So you know, in that, so we we certainly see ourselves as much more than just a funder. You know, we can, we can, uh, we'll build our, over time in those areas we are interested in, become a source of research and information. You know, we can be a convener and bring parties together. And again, I think today's a great example of that. Um, it was really interesting uh, for me sitting and listening to. Teo Spearing, the, the chief executive of Fonterra, and then the chief executive of one of the five, uh, uh, four other companies that joined with them, Westland Milk Products, standing up there and both saying that this was a fantastic opportunity for them to work together, um, which is something that they both acknowledged that in many cases they hadn't done in the past. And so, you know, I think that, uh, you know, that, that we're, we have the good fortune to be able to help create an environment where that sort of thing can happen. And I, I, I don't, I, I'm not overstating it. I said help create. We're not doing it. But we can, we can bring those parties to the table and maybe help start them acting in a way that they ne wouldn't necessarily be doing naturally. And that, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a great um, gift that uh, I think phil philanthropic groups have got. Uh, and um, and something that you know I think we'll do uh, you know hopefully we'll do more and more of so it's a lot more than just handing out money. We're about transformation means change and so we 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 see ourselves very much as a catalyst for change in those areas that we choose to. I've talked about us partnering and um, and partnering with with projects and with others and um, you know New Zealanders are are naturally outward looking. Uh, I think um, that, that's one of the benefits of living in one little corner of the world and you know, take, having to get on a plane for three hours to get anywhere and even when you get there you only get to the West Island anyway. So it's, uh, uh, it's, um, uh, you know, it's a long way uh, out so I think we look out. So partnering with global philanthropists is, uh, is something that I hope that we will do over, over time. And, um, you know, the U.S. is is obviously uh, you know the, the one of the one of the key areas that we look for. That we've chosen that sort of model here, and um, and partnering with uh, with groups and being a New Zealand partner for those for those uh, sort of groups is something that we're really keen to do. 
not many of them have got the foresight and the and the get up and go that that you people that Matt and and you people have got to actually be here in the way that you be here. And you know, where I think this is, uh, I, I value the opportunity to to meet the meet and make the relationships that uh, who we've got here. Um, uh, you guys, you know, have, have have partnered with New Zealand in a way that's just incredibly powerful. But we'll look to make those connections with others who aren't here yet, um, and uh, and help build that. So that's next. What about education? Well, we're new at education, so uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to. Uh, give you any blinding insights into education, and, uh, and I, I'm sure you've had those over the last, uh, you know, over the last f five or six hours, really. But I can, I can talk to you about our ex our short experience with it. Um, we we ran a we run a once a year process in terms of applications. We did that in the middle of last year. We got um, I thought in education we might get about 40 applications. We got 140. Uh, um, they were they were incredibly spread in terms of uh, the, in terms of uh, you know the areas that they were in. This is this pie chart is sort of gives you a, a feel for that and. Um, and you know, I wouldn't read too much into the uh, the, the splits that we've chosen. That was something that we did at the time, and it was just a way, really, at the time, of helping to bring some order to what we'd got. You'll see that the biggest section is environmental education, and I think we'll start talking. Um, we've, uh, you know, I've said to you that our two areas of interest are. Uh, the environment and education, but I think from now on, or certainly after my board meeting next week, uh, I'm hoping that I'll start talking about us having three areas of interest, and those will be environment, education, and environmental education. Uh, and um, I think that's an area that we will we we haven't got engaged in yet, but we definitely want to get engaged in. There's a number of uh, a number of people that are here this week who have who have got significant experience and capability in that area of environmental education, and and that's another one of the those connections are one of the other values out of this week for for me and for us. But you know the other comment I'd make about that pie chart is how diverse it is, and for those of you who are from the education industry, none of that will be a surprise because you know how uh, diverse it is. And one of the things I'll talk in a in a in a, in a minute about the the two projects that we did choose uh, in education out of the 140 or so, but. Um, uh, one of the things that we will also do and, and are starting to do now is is narrow down what are the areas of int of, of real interest to us. Um, uh, you know, fifty million dollars for education uh, is a lot of money, um, and um, but but it's not uh, change the world type of money unless you're very targeted about where you're going to go and how you're going to go about doing it. And if we're looking to to commit to maybe, uh, you know, I say half a dozen projects, I hope with partners it'll be more. Again, today's a great example. We've talked about bringing partners in. The dairy industry comes in and pitches in $5 million. That's not that's additional, in fact, to the money that that is in there already, but there's other situations where we'll be able to put less in if, and, and others will put more in and we, and we should be able to do more projects. I'll talk about the two that we uh, supported, but just briefly, how did we how did we choose? Really, how did we go through our process? Um, you know, five characteristics really. And you know, for um, for those of you who are here yesterday, I touched on those yesterday. But transformational, really transformational change, um, and change that would would not otherwise occur. So we're not looking to be a substitute funder for anybody. Um, and if there are other funders then that's not who would do things, then that's not the place for us. Um, that puts us in places where there is either higher risk or, or different time frames or different ways of doing things uh, from um, traditional means. And, um, and that means that not, all, not everything we back will succeed. Uh, and we're um, upfront about that, and you know, you know, the the people who, the, the people who are from Silicon Valley or have been involved in early stage ventures uh, um, uh, themselves will be well familiar with that. You don't expect that they're all going to succeed, but that's a place that we'll be. Understanding what the problem is and uh, and and being able to be clear and have clarity around it is a fundamental part of the of the early part of the evaluation process for us. And if 
if applicants haven't really got a clear picture of that themselves, then that tells you something. Um, uh, you know, the um, project management, I've, I've, I've put their project management with leadership, but I probably should have put those the other way around. It's really leadership. Uh, you know, if you've got leadership, then the project management will come. And, um, and one of the things I'm um, sort of proud of but not surprised by is that if you look at the leaders of the four project, if, if projects that we support, they're all outstanding leaders uh, in, our, in our view. And, um, you know, not necessarily high profile. Al Bramley to David Zip, who some of you have seen, did an outstanding job standing up there beside Teo Spearing, who's, you know, probably one of the bigger CEOs in a New Zealand context. Al's probably one of the newer ones. We're in week two of Zip in his first CEO role. And he stood up there and did a brilliant job of, of, talking, uh, of talking about Zip. And, that, you know, that sort of, you know, if you, you talk about leadership capability and so on, then Al's got it. He hasn't got the profile. Some of the other projects, Damien Salmond is the leader of one. She's probably known to, to many of you. And um, for on the educational side, Francis Valentine may be known to some, some of you. Uh, are, are people who've got probably more of a profile, but, but a strong leadership capability uh, and potential. Wide impact, we, we want to support projects that we think can ultimately have a national impact. Um, even restoration of Na Abel Tasman National Park is obviously clearly a local thing, but, uh, but that's having an impact um, on, the, on our partner in that, which is DOC. Uh, and, um, and so we can see that that project, even though it's clearly not got national geographical aspirations, can have national, can have national impact. Um, and the, th and the, the last capability is around sustainability. There's no point in us going and supporting a project for five years, doing wonderful things or other things uh, with it, and then at the end of the five years when our, we, uh, we decide that our funding stops, that it all falls in a hole or goes backwards. So having a, 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 a plan for sustainability is an integral part of us, of us being involved. In Abel Tasman National Park, one of the ways we went about that was um, we talked to the government about the fact that we were keen, to, we were happy to come in and fund making Abel Tasman National Park predator-free. It's a 30-year project, but a lot of ground can be made in the first 10 years. But we said that we were happy to do that, provided the government was prepared to commit that any ecological gains that were made during that time would be at least, at a minimum, maintained. Um, and the government agreed to that and have signed an accord with us called the Tomorrow Accord by which they undertake that, that, uh, what, I, what I've just described to maintain the ecological gains. And, and we have the ability and, and, and it is written in a way that any philanthropic group with a suitable project can join to, um, uh, to bring their projects in under the Tomorrow Accord. So it's not just a, it's not just a next agreement. So that's, that's how we got to sustainability in that example. So there's lots of different ways of doing it, but it's, uh, it's a fundamental part of the, of the picture for us. So the projects, look, I'm, I, I'm going to talk, uh, there's, I've got a short video on, on these two projects, um, which, which I'll show. So the Mind Lab, how many of you know of the Mind Lab, just out of interest to me? Okay, maybe... Uh, maybe. A fifth of you. So, um, so the Mind Lab is a, um, is a technology laboratory in Auckland set up by a lady called Frances Valentine. She really set it up because she recognised that kids were not getting, um, uh, you know, young people were not, in her view, getting exposure to to technology in a way that was uh, that was good, that was quick enough and fast enough. Very quickly, she she set it up with holiday with holiday programs and so on. Very quickly, schools started bringing classes in. Very quickly, her da the day filled up with school classes coming through the Mind Lab, um, and then she and and she noticed that when classes came, uh, classes would come along with maybe thirty children, and there'd be ten teachers, and uh, and. Um, and not because that took 10 teachers for the class, but because the, the teacher told the other teachers in the school and, and brought them along because they, they were hungry for that knowledge. So 
Frances, who's a, who's a woman of action, uh, um, uh, set, brought Unitech in and set up a postgraduate diploma for teachers, 40-week program that started last year, uh, or the first course was run last year. Teachers do it while they're teaching, 10 hours a week. The first 16 weeks they do six hours a, uh, six hours a week in the Mind Lab uh, as a cohort of 40. They're sharing uh, all their work online, obviously, and working, and then the second 16 weeks of the course uh, um, are, are done online. Um, and, uh, you know, we've, we've took a look at the program, thought it, was, uh, thought it was fantastic, and really, Francis just wants to get it out around the country as quickly as possible. So we're, sub we're providing scholarships for teachers to help get it out. The, co the, the program costs $2,750 a teacher. We're providing $800, $1,000 scholarships. And, um, and the Mind Lab and Unitech have come in with a $1,000 scholarship. So 800 teachers this year will get to do the course for $750. In fact, in Gisborne, there's, uh, there's uh, off to the side, but you know, it's sort of the th how how these things can build on each other. In Gisborne, they've said it's so fantastic. Eastland Community Trust have come in with a program, and they're they're paying the other 750. So teachers in Gisborne will be doing it for free. is 1,300 days away. You know, we can't keep talking about 21st century literacy and, and capability as though it's coming. You know, we, we're right in the thick of it. The Mind Lab is an interdisciplinary lab. Um, it looks at the needs of today's world. We need to raise our digital competency and change in the role of careers and jobs. We need to start with young children. And so the Mind Lab was developed fundamentally so we can enable children to get excited about the possibility of technology. But once we realised that it's all very well to teach kids and to have schools come through and get educated, the teachers are just as important, in fact probably more so. We're developing the next generation of teachers and what they are is, is teachers who have been in the workforce, in the teaching profession for many years, in many cases sometimes 30, 40 years, but actually are wonderful teachers who are trying to continue to be engaged with their students. So the support from the Next Foundation, uh, what we've done is established the Next Generation Teacher Scholarships. 800 teachers around New Zealand next year undertake postgraduate studies in digital and collaborative learning in their region or close to the region close to them where they'll be able to learn all about new ways of actually teaching, changing the way the education is delivered in this country. As a nation uh, contributing to a global market, we don't have time for catch up. We, right now we need to be leapfrogging uh, our teachers forward. And we need to take them from where they are right now, which potentially is a fairly old traditional analog model of delivery. And we need to kind of rocket fire them forward to make them feel really confident working with young people today. So that's that's Francis and and uh, and the Mind Lab and and you know di uh, digital literacy for teachers was something that struck us as uh, as 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 an issue that and and some that we could uh, that we could help make a difference in and 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 was important. Um, the other educational project that we supported is Springboard Trust. Out of interest, how many of you have heard of Springboard Trust? Yeah, Rebecca, because you've talked to me. Eh? So. Yeah, so not many, and it's 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 interesting. Uh, it's that's what I sort of what I expected. Uh, so, um, Springboard Trust about leadership, professional development for primary school principals, really focused on low decile schools, uh, and. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a program that started about five years ago, has worked only with schools in South Auckland to date. About 90 principals have done the program and um, is expanding with the back of our support into Northland. Uh, and, um, and then next year will be Waikato um, and, um, and, is, and is really building up its backbone, the backbone organisation to be able to expand further. Um, 
Ian Narev, who uh, I've got a, have got a video, who's the chief executive of Commonwealth Bank, which is about a 50,000 employee business uh, in Aust uh, run out of Australia, um, is, is the champion for this. He was a McKinsey partner when he started up in New Zealand, a passionate New Zealander, passionate about education, and, and, um, and gives uh, you know, his time and energy to driving this program in a, in a way that we think is fantastic and has, and has brought in a really great range of, um, of, of educationalists and business people together and part of the thing that attracted us to us, other than just the importance of leadership uh, in terms of um, uh, driving educational outcomes uh, was um, uh, was the fact that it's a partnership between business that uh, business and education that is for education, um, but 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 the the principals are not the only beneficiaries of this. So are the business people business people who partner. They buddy they run a program, but they buddy principals up with business people uh, for the year for 12 months. ASB have been there from the beginning, and they've now made that partnering that buddy program part of their leadership program within ASB because of the value that they see that their people have been getting out of the buddying with the principals. Um, and for those of you who don't, uh, haven't got the sort of exposure to the principals, it's one of the hardest jobs in the world really and it's a, it's a, it's a really challenging job. So I think it's not only been an eye opener for a lot of these business people but it's been an education for them too. I had a great time at school. Uh, as I say, I grew up in the public system. Uh, I remember inspirational teachers right from what used to be called the primers. Tried my best in class, maybe wasn't always the best student. Loved the sports, uh, loved uh, the drama classes, the music classes, uh, and just felt that there were a whole lot of people there to try and help me do the best I possibly could in whatever area I choose to, to try and do well. In. Simply put, Springboard Trust works with principals to help make their schools better. Uh, so our view is that with uh, schools like in business, like in the arts, like in sports, if you want to help an organisation or a team get better, you start with the leader. We are definitely focused more on the low decile schools, uh, who tend to need a bit more of the support because they don't have the same resource. Delightfully, what we found, a lot of these schools are run by great principals with great staff, who really are in a good position to provide good education to kids. And we bring people from different businesses to work alongside the principals, we call them capacity partners. Maybe somebody from McKinsey, ASB, Russell McVeigh, Spark, Fonterra, we've had people from all sorts of different businesses. And they work very closely with the principals, talking to them about the schools, getting to know their schools. They help the principals a lot. The partnership between the principals and these capacity partners works very well for the principals and we found that. What we also found is what a difference that makes in the life of the capacity partners. They are inspired by what the principals are doing. They love going to the schools, they love seeing the impact the schools are having on the kids. They repeatedly tell us, well actually I think I'm getting more out of it than I'm putting in. And that's when you know you're onto something good. What we're hoping to achieve over the next five or ten years again starts with the kids. We want to help impact the education outcomes. Uh, with the schools we've worked to date, we've uh, touched schools uh, comprising in total over 32,000 children. Uh, we're hoping to more than double that number with the help that we're getting from Next Foundation and others. Uh, the good news is, even if schools get to an even higher level, you then want them to get to a higher level still. So the model of helping principals, helping the people who make the most difference, bringing businesses together with schools and all focusing on better outcome for kids, that never goes away. And what all of us currently working at Springboard hope is that when we all leave, we've left an organisation which is sustainable and which five years will be doing an even better job than it was doing when we were around. We're pretty confident we're on that path. It's been way too long. I'm stuck in the abyss of someone else's song. Okay, so I'll uh, I'll I'll finish up there. They've got uh, the um, 
One of the things I love about those videos is the um, that the music it comes is is from our secondary school students in New Zealand. There's a competition run here, and Elijah, you you know, you're here. There's a competition run in New Zealand by a guy and by a guy called Mike Chun, uh, which is for which is for songwriting uh, songwriters for secondary school children, and uh, they and it, and it's widely supported. They choose 40 each year, and the four songs that we've chosen have all come from those kids, and um, they are um, I love them. And uh, you know they're ve they're very cool. And uh, one of the nice things that will come out of this, we'll profile those kids and their songs on our website and do some stuff with them over over the year to come. And uh, that's sort of one of the that's that's one of the little nice kickers for us. Okay, so um, Joseph, I'll go to I know if, uh, on time, but if you want to go to questions and answers, that's fine by me. So. Uh, hi. Um, it's really exciting that you're investing in education in this country. Um, I, <coughs> I used to be a secondary school teacher, and I've involved with, been involved with some of the professional development around um, upskilling teachers around learning to code, ICT, that sort of thing. Um, I guess I found the experience pretty disheartening, um, and. The, the experience that I had was that the, the acceleration of learning and the students was outstripping anything that the teachers could hope to keep up with. And I found that the approach was uh, teaching the teachers how to deliver, and there was the, the word delivery used a couple of times in one of those talks. Um, I feel like my, my preferred approach would be give teachers the skills they need to just really support the students and get out of the way. I think we've heard that theme as well. Do you have any sense of, of whether that's possible with these programs? Um, and I'm also interested, do you, I'm not sure if you mentioned whether you've got someone who's got experience in the education system on your team sort of advising you on these things? Yeah. Hmm. Thanks. Okay. Well, t uh, to take the second question uh, first, thanks. Um, yeah, I've got a, um, uh, um, First of all, uh, an advisory panel uh, that works. So um, the, t the t two of the educationalists that are on it that you might know uh, are Margaret Bendall, who, uh, who was um, who was a former principal of Epsom Girls Grammar, actually, but has been involved in, and is involved with uh, things like cognition and Teach First uh, and 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 uh, and others now. And a guy called John Taylor, who was um, who was also a former principal. Uh, and then talk to a lot of principals and talk to a lot of uh, and and talk to a lot of other people. One one point I'd and uh, one point I'll make and and uh, it's not defensive at all, but in in any sense, this is not the end of what next is going to do in education. It's just the beginning, and um, and they're the two that we chose this year. Um, the question around, you know, all of this gets, every, every educational project in our view gets back to what are, what's it doing for learning outcomes in the classroom. That's the, that's really the, in some ways the only measure. And um, so our response to trying to get to that is that each, so each project that we support, we are also supporting um, what, what we consider to be um, rigorous, uh, you know, ev ev evaluative framework to go alongside to find out whether that's the case. So. In the, so in both both of those two cases, we have we have also funded that research uh, that is commencing, and that is uh, so that is going on. And in the case of Springboard, trying to draw the connection between improved strategic direction amongst principals and learning outcomes in the classroom is is a very hard thing to do. But these guys are going to have a go at it. They've con they've they've um, uh, so NZCER have been contracted to do the to to essentially shape up that framework um, and do that. So we think that that I guess my res my f main response to your question is that we can't guarantee any of those things, but we're going to make sure that there's good evaluative framework alongside each of the projects so that we can actually find out, find that out over time. Um, and uh, and and it's the same and uh, same in mind lab really. So. Time for two questions. You mentioned the other day that education is quite a broad area, and you're narrowing down on a few sections of it. Would you be able to uh, say what they are? Yeah, yeah, I put them on the slide, Josh. Then, so, as it turned out, so this is not um, as it turned out because it was the one it was the one slide I had to go. So. 
This is our current thinking. Don't take this out and, and quote us, uh, if you can, because um, I haven't put this in front of my board yet. So, um, uh, but, but this shows you where my thinking is going. Um, and, and let me say, not my thinking too. This is something that uh, you know, the educational advisors have been, uh, have been in as well. So really, those four areas, um, you know, putting environmental education as an area in itself, but you know, early childhood education, but really also the naught to two parents as first educators is an area where there's not necessarily a lot of institutional uh, uh, work, where there hasn't been, but, but where, there's, where there's an increasing welter of research showing that, to use, sorry, a commercial term, but where you get the best bang for your buck. And, um, and that's uh, uh, in terms of change. So I think that's an area that we'll certainly end up, uh, end up uh, looking, to, looking to get involved in. Um, I, I heard, uh, it might have been you Josh, but just when I walked in, uh, somebody talking about collaboration as a factor and that's something that uh, that we're really interested in. There's a project called Excel Rotorua, which uh, some of you may or may not know, which is about the city of Rotorua really trying to take responsibility for the educational outcomes across all of the schools in Rotorua, 46 schools, primary, intermediate and secondary, and they're going at that in a way which is which is not at odds with, but is a, a different line to tomorrow's schools and really looking for ways for schools to collaborate on various things um, and, uh, and, and learn from each other. So that's, that's one of the areas. Mentoring and, mentoring and buddy systems, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence and not a lot of uh, hard research to support that, that they're a great area. And future focus, really, technology and education, it's going to change things. I'm sure you've been talking about it all day. Uh, so it's a place that we want to look. One more question. Hi. Um, one, of, one of the big barriers that I find a lot of um, school leavers have to getting their first jobs is finding some um, work experience um, or some kind of volunteer project that's you know, a really structured, mission-focused project that they were part of that means something to employers. And the work experience often doesn't even have to be relevant to the type of career pathway mm. that they want. Mm. It's just a, sh a way of being able to show that they could be part of a team, part of a mm. project, be reliable, so on. I'm interested in whether um, a Next Foundation could be a connector between some of your organisations that are doing big um, environmental projects mm. and people or organisations that are interested in setting up mass work mm. experience or volunteer project mm. schemes mm. Um, and if it's on that scale, it can be recognised, you know, as a young person, I was on that such and such mm. scheme to do, you know, the possum trapping mission to mm. clear up Abel Tasman. Is mm. anything like that in the pipeline? Yeah, well, it's got a bit further along the pipeline with your question because, uh, because it, it, came up, it came up in a discussion this week, uh, really, and uh, somebody made a, made a similar sort of suggestion around there was an opportunity there around and around predator, predator management, you know, tra the, you know um, labor for, manual labour for the traps is a major, uh, is a major constraint to, to acceleration. So... So that suggestion was made. You've you've given another a another angle on it, and it's something that we will go back and have a look, have a look at because we're interested. We're really interested in the predator management space, and we're really interested in the edu in that in that education space. Um, the other thing, sort of related. The other thing I'll um, t tell you to go and have a look at a website. I just I just remember I said, told Matt yesterday I was going to email it to you, and I remembered just when I walked in here, Matt. So, is a, is an organisation called Pride and Joy that a couple of Kiwis set up about eighteen months ago. Um, uh, that is that is about providing vocational training for the young unemployed. Uh, they will only take on the young unemployed in their business, um, and they want to form a, these these two guys who are, um, who are who are who are young by my standards, not by many of yours, but they're in their forties probably. Uh, um, two really capable guys. One uh, ex Nike managing marketing manager in the states. One ran NZ Ski, the, basically the South Island ski fields. They both want to develop a global brand in New Zealand and they latched on to, out of New Zealand and they've latched on to providing vocational training for the young unemployed through this Pride and Joy, which is about ice cream vending actually. And um, so go and have a look at Pride and Joy, that's, a, um, that's one, uh, you know, New Zealand companies sort of take on it uh, as well and your suggestion is a great one, thank you. Bill, I'd like to congratulate you for the great work you did today with uh, Fonterra and the dairy industry. 
coming in and uh, for doing all the work you do through Next and very excited to co-create with you uh, in the education space as well as the environmental space. But thanks very much for taking your time and sharing this with us. Really appreciate uh, the insights and, and the work Next is doing. Thank you.